Hi, I'm Barbara Persing and I'm here to walk you through my newest block of the month, which is called A Gathering. Let's just start off with a little piece of information. Just so you know, I would rather have root canal than film these videos. Not because I don't want to share with everyone, but this is supremely out of my comfort zone. That was just a little FYI. Back to the pattern, a gathering. This is my most recent block of the month. And in the videos, I'm gonna walk you through each month, give you um, some tips, some tricks, talk to you about the pattern itself. If you're not doing this as um, a laser cut program, which is what is in this package, which makes it easier for me to demonstrate it. If you're doing regular applique or any form, whatever your preferred form of applique is, these videos will still give you lots of information. Um, you'll just need to prepare your pieces before the start of the video. Um, if you have any questions, you can always reach me through my website, barbaraperson.com. I hope that you find these videos to be helpful and at the very end of all the videos, we're either going to go so far as to talk about how I quilted the original quilt, and um, I'll give you some tips as well for your quilting and your quilting choices. So stay with me and we'll get through this. We're going to start out with the pattern and then each month. So follow along. Again, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me at barbaraperson.com. Okay, so let's go through the packaging and the pattern itself. This is the package for a full laser cut kit. When you look in the back, you'll see this dotted fabric. This is a um, fat quarter of the fabric that is going to be used for the one inch step order. This is included in every laser cut kit. If you're doing a regular fabric kit, you'll also have this fabric. In the beginning, first couple pages. Now this front cover is perfect for helping you see which fabrics were used for what burrs. Again, if you're using a fat eighth fabric or you're working with your stash, each burr does not need to be exactly made in the fabric that it's represented in. You could go ahead and be creative and use whatever fabrics work for you. But this is a perfect guide for placement Introductory page, information, please read what you need to know, know the measurements, fabric and recommendations, block of the month presentation, and we ask you to read through the pattern before starting. A full schematic of what the blocks look like broken down for you. Okay, month number one. The very first instruction is what we're going to trim our white background to, which is 39 and a half by 12 inches. I'm going to do some cutting and get ready for that. Fabric prep. This is basically how you are going to do your applique. If you're going to use a fusible, if you're going to use needle turn, we give you some instruction here. For the purposes of the laser cut kit, you're going to receive in your kit block number one. We have inserted your line drawing. into the sleeve and you'll notice that the pattern is a full scale line drawing pattern and we'll get back to some of the other information that is present on this pattern piece and here are all of our laser cut pre-fused pieces so this is what we're going to work with today for a gathering block number one if you were using a fabric kit for a gathering whether it's your own fabrics or a kit that has all the fabrics that I designed for this line, 
Um, the line of fabric is by Island Batik, and it is called Tweet, and I designed the fabrics for this um, project. <clears throat> if you're using these fabrics and you've never done applique before, if you read the instructions under fabric preparation, it tells you exactly what to do. You're gonna iron your fusible web to the wrong side of each fabric. And because the majority of the fabric is going to be used, you're only getting a fat eighth of each color, go ahead and fuse the entire piece of fabric. If you're using a fusible that has paper backing, then leave the paper backing in place. We go on to tell you about tracing each shape onto freezer paper and numbering the shapes so that you'll know exactly which piece belongs where. And you'll notice that with this particular project, the applique pieces are numerically ordered so that you will start with number one and move from there. If you applique in that order, then all of your pieces will go down appropriately. Any place where you see one piece, number 12, obviously here, is going to be placed under number 13. So I would need to extend the size of number 12. So when I put 12 down and then fuse 13 on top, I've covered that edge. The numbers will help you with that. So each piece that is numbered under another number, you have to look and see where those applique pieces will cover and make sure that you extend the shape of that piece appropriately. You'll see that when I start doing the fusing and how that works. Um, but if you've never done applique before, that's what you'll need to do. So in other words, this guy's number six is obviously gonna go underneath his head. So that little beak piece is gonna be cut a little bit larger on this one side so that it will scoot underneath. Number 10 is also going to go underneath his head. Applique is a matter, <clears throat> applique is a process of layering. Um, what you want to do is you want to layer the pieces and not try and have them butt perfectly up against each other because it's almost impossible to cut accurately that way. All of that information is in the pattern for you. It tells me to cut a piece that is 39 and a half by 12. <clears throat> So I just took my full width of fabric and I cut a complete width of fabric that is 12 inches wide. I then ironed that piece and cut it to 39 and a half inches long, keeping it at 12 inches wide. The next step in all of this is to create a tracing paper drawing of your original applique design. And why you need this tracing paper drawing is once we have traces on the tracing paper, we're going to use this as our placement guide. And this is the most accurate way to have your applique turn out. So I'm just taking these sheets of tracing paper. Use whatever size paper you have. And I'm going to tape these together. So I have a sheet as big as my applique pattern sheet. And then I'm going to trace it with a dark uh, fine line Sharpie. And I'm going to make sure that I put the numbers in for all of the pieces. Because once those numbers are on there, it will make it easy for me to uh, go through the ironing and the applique process. So stay tuned and I'll show you what this looks like when I'm all finished. I'm going to start taping this together. So I've completed my tracing paper copy of the pattern. It doesn't really take that long, but it's worth its weight in gold. And I noticed right here, I forgot a number. I'm gonna to have to get that on there. Otherwise, everything looks good. On to the next step. I have found my painter's tape, and now I have my background piece taped down. 
As you can see, I have bird number one on there. I just wanted to orient myself with the laser cut kit. Now we're going to go ahead and show you exactly how I got that on there. It's a little bit difficult getting the whole shot in, but as it turns out, we're going to be able to work on the next bird, which is right here, and that's in the, in the frame. Using the lines that I had created on my tracing paper, especially the corners, I'm going to line up my tracing paper, and then I'm going to tape it down. This way, my background is taped down and my tracing paper will be taped down as well. But I'm only going to tape the tracing paper across the top. I've done the first guy. The highest number here was number seven. So now we're going to look for number eight, which I know is his feet. And there's a number I forgot to write down. So that is my next piece. Let's get our laser cut pieces out and let's get working on this next bird. I'm going to refer to my pattern cover. All of the bird feet are made using the same fabric. So they will come joined together from the laser cutter, and this is what it will look like. The next thing we'll be doing is separating the feet that we need. So let's snip some of these apart. kind of like a puzzle. Thank God there's not as many pieces to this puzzle. Certainly not 500. Having done this project in the design in the design phase, obviously I created the whole thing and had to do all of the drawing and editing. And believe me, there was lots of editing. It never comes out initially as you think it's going to, so there's lots of changes. So I had to trace and cut all of these feet many, many times. I'm glad I get to cheat a little bit and use a laser kit. And I know that Number eight is going to be the feet, which you saw me cut apart in a previous video. So let's pull out the feet and see which ones fit. It's definitely not those. Not those. I thought I had these sorted. I did. So these are going to go right here and you can see they're connected and they're going to fit up under the body. Remember what I said about the small pieces blowing away? That would be the first thing that would happen to me. So I'm going to put these pieces back in my little bin to keep them safe. And from the picture, I know that this is the body for this bird. So I'm going to put this over to the side. And I'm going to put these other pieces in the little bin for safekeeping as well. Let's iron down this bird's feet. I'm using a small Oster iron. I always want to make sure that the sole plate of my iron is clean 
because we're working on white fabric and if ever there is a spot on your iron you're certainly going to find it when you go to work on white fabric because the bottom of the tracing paper is not taped down i'm going to remove the paper backing i'm going to slide my feet underneath my drawing and now i can see exactly where they belong A little bit of repositioning. And this is where I want my feet to be. I'm going to fold this back using my iron. I'm going to press that into place. I like to give it a short press. That way, if for any reason there is something that I need to lift or move, I will still have that option. Okay. The next piece to go on here is number nine. That is the beak and it's a very small piece and it looks to me like the beak in this picture is a little black and white beak. So let's see if we can find that piece. Here is the beak for this bird. It's actually a little purple dot beak. I'm going to cut this off of here like we showed before with the snips. My favorite snips for this project are these very small pair of Karen K. Buckley. Um, and the size of them makes it very easy uh, to get into those little spaces. So this is number nine. I'm going to take this other piece, since I have it in my hand, I'm going to snip off the extra. And then I'm going to stick this in my bin for safekeeping. And I'm going to throw the snippet into the trash. While I was looking for the beak, I also came across the plume, which is for the top of this particular bird's head. The beak is number nine, the plume is number 10. Remove your papers from the back of your laser cut pieces. And again, we're going to lift up and we're going to place our pieces underneath until they're lined up in the proper spot. That is exactly where we want it to be. And you can see it's cut extra to go under the piece it's meant to go under. Since I'm here, I'm going to also go ahead and place my number 10. And there's number 10 in the right position. I'm going to scoot this down just a hair. Now remember, some of these things, if this plume is tilted a little bit differently, it's not going to make a big difference. I freeze with my tracing paper up. Hold that for a few seconds. That's down. So I've done 9 and 10. Now I'm on to 11. 11 happens to be the full body of this bird, which is an easy one to place. I'm going to take off my paper backing. And I'm going to put my body in place. If I align the top of the head first, usually by putting a little pressure on that, I can line up the rest of the body without shaking the whole shape. Kind of helps me with the larger pieces to get the placement a little bit more quickly. You can see exactly everything here is lined up. Again, moving my paper aside, I'm going to give this body a press. I try not to slide the iron over the pieces. You want to really lift and press. That way you're not sliding something out of position. Eleven, twelve, and thirteen. So let's go back to our drawing. Number twelve looks like it is a kind of pink piece, and number thirteen, the head looks like it's orange. So I'm going to find these pieces, and I believe that this is going to be the head for this bird. And I'm going to snip off that piece, and then I'm going to just try and see. Yep, that's the right one. 
So that piece is correct. I'll snip off these other little extras on this little baby bird, which will be used later in the block. Throw out your snippet and put him for safekeeping. The back part of the mother's head looks to me like it is kind of peachy color. It could possibly be this. I would say that is correct. It's number 12. Remove your backing paper, just as we did before. That's 12 and this is 13. And the reason the numbers and the order is important is because you can see that number 12 is clearly gonna fit under how number 13 was cut and you'll have perfect placement. I can see the tip, I'm gonna put my finger on there. Now I'm gonna scooch the paper back and I'm gonna look and see, I want 12 to just line up with the back of the head so that you don't see the black peeking out underneath. Straight down and press. At the end of the whole process, I will go back and repress the whole block now I know that number 13 is meant to cover the rest of the head. So I actually don't even need to flip my paper back. This is exactly where we want it to go. We want it to line up so that it's just covering the outline of what's underneath. Again, straight down, press. The last piece for this bird is her large wing. And it is this fuchsia. I'm gonna snip this apart. Snip this piece off as well. And put that into the trash pile and this goes to safekeeping. Let's remove our paper. And let's see how this wing goes. Just like that. Again, with the bigger piece, if I can align one corner of it and kind of hold my finger on that, it makes it easier. That would be my puppies announcing possibly a visitor. Let's go and see. Now I'm ready to proceed to my next little guy. And again, you can see from the um, color on the cover that it's an orange bird. And we're gonna try and match up his feet. All of these guys are gonna have feet that are pretty similar. It's probably not a big deal if you don't have the exact pair. This looks like the right pair to me. Put this into the trash. Move these guys off the paper because I don't want them to fall when I flip this up. It's an easy way to lose your pieces. Let's go and do this guy. Body on top. I'm going to put his tail into position and hold it and then try and just adjust the rest of the body. Here we go. Break down with the iron. I 
And let's see what kind of wing this bird has. He has a black and white wing. So let's find our black and white pieces and see which one of these wings looks like the right wing. They're probably about the same. Quick and easy, paper off. Let's put his wing on. Eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. Same process. We're going to work with the legs. Only these legs are facing the other direction. This should be a little bit easier to figure out. There we go. What color bird is this? This is a black and white bird with a green wing. So here's his wing. That's easy enough to find. And I believe what we're looking at is this guy right here. Now that you're getting the hang of it, you'll see how quickly this is going to go and how nice it is to have these laser cut pieces. wing on there. So we're ready to go. This bird here, 21, 22, and 23. He's a purple bird with a black and white wing. So this is my only purple bird in this bag. I'll take that paper off and get him ready. Let's find some feet for him. There's a nice pair of legs. There we go, that's nice, a good position. You can see his, this is gonna be where the legs are going to hit. Kind of helps you a little bit with positioning and then we're gonna cover that. The legs do move a little bit. So if you're positioning more than one piece at a time, you might need to put your hands on the legs. And then color wing, did we say? Oh, he's got a black and white starburst wing, which would be this fabric here. Press that into position. I'm going to move my camera over just a little bit if I can. And we'll try and catch the end of the project. My next bird is black and white with a pink wing. So here's my black and white bird. Let's look at his legs. His feet are a little bit spread. These are his legs. There we go. Take the paper off.
And this bird has a pink wing. Which is this wing right here. slide this underneath. Believe me, I wish it was this quick the first time I did this project when I was cutting out all of these birds and trying to decide what colors to use, switching things up as I went along. Let's move the camera over a little bit. I'm going to come over to the end here. We have here 27 would be these large feet. I'm going to put these on and I think I'm going to press these down right away once I have these in position. There we go. Just the feet. body for this bird is the pink 27 28 so the next piece to go on which would be the plume stick to the order let's get the plume on there there's 28 29 is the body. Turn this off. So once I have the top of the head adjusted, I usually put my finger on there so that as I pull the tail up, I don't slide that out of position at the same time. Kind of makes it like a lever. There we go. So that is number 29. Let's give that a quick press. Remember I said I will go back and repress this whole piece to make sure everything is down nice and tight. Number 30, so if I look at the picture, I only have a few pieces left. The back of this bird's head is done with the black and white. So that's gonna go on right here. I'll peel that off. Slide this under. Now again, like with the other piece, I'm gonna lift this up and I'm just going to eyeball this a little bit so that it is right along the back of the bird's head with the edge of this positioned properly. And again, straight down so you don't change the position of that piece. There we go. That was 30, I'm gonna put now 31, which would be towards the face. And that is a purple dot fabric, which is my last one in my bin. I'm gonna look and see how this needs to be positioned. So it's going like that. Again, I'm looking to put this point so that it goes right into the chest wall and that this here is covering and that the little pink of the head is not sticking out. And press that down. Thirty-two is the beak. 
And this was a piece that we had looked at earlier. And they keep it on this nice square so that if you were to have a really small piece, this would be very easy to lose. And because this square has a uh, fusible on it, I'm actually going to keep this little piece of yellow because if later during the process I lose somebody's beak, I could cut a new one out of that. So I'm going to save that in my bin. The paper backing is off. Making sure that I have the fusible side down. Let's see where this piece goes exactly. So that beak is going right there. Straight down. And I had it backwards. Now it is stuffed to my iron. Okay. See why we keep that little piece just in case we need it? Let's see if we can get this piece to go down. Try it again. See if I have it in the wrong way. Oh, this piece is not going to stick. I can cut a new piece for this beak, but what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to use my Roxanne's glue baste it, and I'm going to glue this in place. It's a very small piece, and once it's appliqued down, it won't matter that the fusible isn't on there. I think because I hit it with the wrong side of the iron, I've melted the fusible. So you can either cut a new beak or you can do what I just did this way. She's all set. Thirty-three is the wing, and that is a black and white wing. This is the last big black and white wing. You can easily see the fusible on the bigger pieces. It's very difficult to see on the smaller pieces. So I should have been a little bit more careful when I was taking that off and not transferring it between both of my hands to keep track of which side had the actual fusible on it. Again, this was just some Roxanne's glue based it. That's a water-based glue and that's perfect for holding down a stray piece. All right, 34, 35, and 36. So these would be the last pieces that I have left in my packaging. This little blue guy. Keep his feet stable while you make adjustments to the body if you have to. His wing. His 
just like that. Obviously, there's lots of room for interpretation. If the wing isn't exactly where I put it, it's okay. You can put it where you like to put it. I'm going to take all my little paper pieces and throw those out. Remember, I am going to save this little piece of yellow, and that's going to go on the bottom of my bin, so I know I won't lose it. Peel back your tracing paper, and if you have any intention of doing the quilt again, you certainly want to keep your tracing paper. I will remove the paper tape. Fold this up nicely and put it back into my pattern bag. Working with these big boards is really nice because it's large enough that I don't have to fumble and move the piece around when I'm going to press it. So now I'm going to go ahead and give this a nice full firm press. If you read the directions, it says three to five seconds in each position. This way, when I go to do my blanket stitch, my applique pieces will be firmly set and there'll be less pulling and your edges will stay nice and smooth. See that? Apparently I didn't have this down enough. Back to the drawing board. I'm going to put this back over here. I'm going to get that lined up. a lot longer to melt these pieces than you realize. That's why I try and go back and do a nice strong press. I use this dry iron because it's meant to be uh, not meant to be it keeps its heat very really well it gets nice and hot without the use of steam lots of times the steam iron really only make, makes its maximum heat output when you're using steam and I prefer not to use steam it's best when you're doing a fusible to not use steam to move our camera over a little bit and we'll go ahead and finish this last guy these are our papers, which will go into the trash. Before I started this, I did press my background piece really well using some starch to get any possible um, seams out of it from the folding, from the factory. I'll fold it when I'm done here and as I do the other pieces or I will try and hang it, maybe over my long arm, lay it flat as possible. If I have to fold this though, before I get to the stitching, I will press it again before I stitch it. it doesn't hurt to press as you go. We will move on to month number two.